brothers and sisters. How are you all today? How was lunch? Burp. <laughs> Do you all feel lethargic after lunch? After the very heavy lunch. <laughs> So, <clears throat> okay, let's go through the, uh, let me see on my left, who is here for the first time, uh, on second, third, fourth, fifth row, all the season parking holders, and then the blank space and the kids go and set up their stall. And then after that is Nelly and B and Dorin. Okay, I think all the season parking order. Yeah. Okay. Hey, the the lady on the chair on the far left hand side. Have you introduced yourself? Ah yes. Let's have the mic. Give her a round of applause. Lily Lo. Yes. Ah. This is the first time I uh, come to this, uh, this group. Ah, very good. And how did you get to know about this Buddhist group? Uh, this is from my daughter. From your daughter. Who is your daughter? <laughs> ah, hello, daughter. <laughs> good. Did you have a good lunch? Yes, thanks. Very good. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Mm, let's see who else is here. Okay, how about the right side? Oh, you have a new hair. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, would the new hair like to introduce the hair? <laughs> Actually, it's not my first time here. Yeah, but new hair. Oh, yeah, but new hair. <laughs> <laughs> lai, lai, lai. Okay, hi, good afternoon, uh, everybody. My name is uh, Yan Ping. Call me Yan Ping. It's uh, my second time here. Second time, huh? Yeah. Mm. I attended uh, the Dharma class in uh. March. Yeah, that is in English. I see. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you. So we have Thomas. Have you introduced? Uh, Lai. Hi, uh, everyone. Um, my name is Zhi Huang, and this is my first time uh, to come here by CC. And how do you get to know about this group? Uh, Thomas. Mm, Thomas, yes, very good. And where are you from? Tell them. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm from NTU Buddhist Society. Mm. Yeah. And what do you do in NTU Buddhist Society? Oh, I'm the current Vice President Dharma. I see. <laughs> so basically, it's just one of the uh, chance to get to know Shifu and also learn Dharma. Very good. Welcome. Let's see. Ah, Shirley's. <laughs> <laughs> Long time. Come, introduce yourself. Uh, okay, hello, I'm Shirley Liu. Uh, I was with Sufu quite some time ago. La. Last uh, year we went Silk Road. Uh, and all my sister. Uh, 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 wait, the wait, last, last year, year, last year a whole bunch, close to 50 percent went Silk Road. Don't say last year we went Silk Road. La. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. You mentioned the last row sister, is it? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Can I say also? Then it means like you went with me, then you went with them also. <laughs> we all went together. <laughs> Two bus full. <laughs> okay. Good. Welcome. Okay, let's see. Who else is here for the first time? Okay, season parking, season parking. Uh, okay. The after the pink shirt behind, then next to the behind. Yes, come. Yes, just Hi, hello. Uh, I'm Sumo here. You have first what? First time, Sumo here. Sumo, uh -huh. yeah. okay. Um, this is my first time here. Introduced by my friend Nelly. Oh, I yeah. see. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Okay, let's see who else is here for the first time. Dun, 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 dun. 
that face behind, who is that behind? Is that Karen behind? Yes. Have you introduced before? Yeah. You probably have. Uh. How about your daughter? <laughs> ah, right. Yeah. Sound like, sound like. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Zane. Zane, yes. Hello, Zane. Hi. Yes. And who, and how do you get to know about this group? Uh, through FOD, Fellowship of Dharma. And what is FOD? Who is FOD? Uh, we're just a group of youth um, gathering together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll notice that sometimes Sifu would have a group of youth come down at about 12.30. Yeah. Uh, so they are a group of youth uh, led by Karen and Jin Yue. Uh, they they have this uh, group where they learn and practice Dharma together. Yeah. So the, before SGC, they will sometimes come and then we will share some things with them. So very good to have you all join us for lunch today and SGC as well. Uh, wait, wait, Zin, Zin. Who do you bring to here today? Um, I brought Meta here. Uh, <laughs> say hello to Meta. So Meta, tell us. <laughs> yeah. So Zin, let me tell you. Uh, it's okay to bring Meta here, but you must be careful of one person when you bring Meta here. You know who? Shufeng. No, not Shufeng. <laughs> what? Why Shufeng? Okay, always bully Meta. Oh, okay. Well. Uh, there's another person you must look out for. That is, start with L. Louis. Yes, Louis. <laughs> yeah, if you if you just look away, then Meta may be kidnapped. <laughs> Maybe dog net. <laughs> yeah, Louis is a dog lover as well. Yeah, so yeah, you can exchange tips. Uh. Yeah, and who is holding on to Meta? Uh, Jason. Jason. Who is Jason? Come, uh, let us. Let us see his Ru San Zhen Mian Mu. Hello, Jason. <laughs> clap lah, you all clap lah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yeah, hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah, how, how is Mita? Good. Sleepy. Sleepy, yeah. Uh, did, did Mita have lunch? No, no she, she ate before coming. Oh, breakfast. I see. Did you have lunch just now? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, it's great. Very good. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so behind Karen, who is that? Hiding behind? Uh. Hi, Shifu. Yes, hello. Yes. I'm Colleen from FOD as well. Hello. Say hello. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, come sit down. <laughs> okay, very good. So everybody accounted for. Yeah. So uh, today is is the second week of the month uh, where we have our lunch dana, and also since August we started the uh, the birthday baby's um, blessing. Yeah. So the celebration and blessing. Did y'all have the cake just now? Yeah, what kind of cake was it? Mango cheese. Mango cheese. Yeah, so uh, mango actually appeared in the Buddha's teaching before. Yeah, when someone asked the Buddha, how, how, how is it like to attain enlightenment? Yeah, so the Buddha told that person, it is like eating mango. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell people how exactly it is like. You can describe it's sour, it's sweet, it has a bit of this and that, but it's not the same as tasting it yourself. Yeah. So similarly, enlightenment, you must attain it yourself to truly know how it's like. Yeah. So uh, having tasted the, 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 the mango, mango cheesecake, now it's time to taste the Dharma cheesecake. Yeah. So today we have uh, the topic Right speech 
to speak, to say or to, not to say. Yeah. Uh, to say or not to say, that is the question. Usually, uh, when we talk about speech, we think about the, the precepts. Yeah. What is the precepts regarding speech? Can you remember? No, no lying, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we recited earlier, right? Uh, Musa wada, we ramani sika padam samadhiyami. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know that that's the right? Speech? That's the, that's the one. Huh? No, not. Every week we recite, recite, recite. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Over here, in some places, we can, we may actually not know what we're reciting. Yeah, but over here, after the Pali chanting, we recite the English translation. Uh, so, what is the English translation? I undertake the precept to abstain from lying. Yeah. So, some places they use the word false speech. Yeah. Sometimes we just put it as no lying. Yeah. Abstaining from lying. Uh, so, no excuse for not knowing. Huh? Uh, but in fact, right speech, right speech is not simply about no lying. Uh, right speech is also not just about not speaking. Yeah. So the other day I was talking to someone, and then someone uh, say this, I corrected her. Say that, I corrected her. Correct until in the end the person say, I I know lah, sao suo sao chuo. Yeah. Then just shut up. Don't 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 say anything. Uh, but actually, it's not the case also. Yeah? Right speech is about saying, speaking in the right way. In what way is speaking in the right way? Yeah, so, under the Noble Eightfold Path. Are you all familiar with Noble Eightfold Path? Familiar not? If I were to stand up and go around and pass you all the mic and ask you all, what is the first of the Noble Eightfold Path, would you all be able to, to, to say? Oh wait, hang on. There's a guy in blue. Aha! <laughs> Hello, guy in blue. Not Wei Yan, in front of Wei Yan. Yes, pass the mic, please. Where's the mic go? Yes, mic go. <laughs> okay, what is your name? Man in blue. Oh, introduce before, huh? Then I introduce again. Huh? <laughs> what is your name again? Robbie, have you introduced before? Yes. You have, huh? Oh, okay, okay. Hello, Robbie. Hey, all of you say hello, Robbie. Hello. <laughs> okay, okay, welcome, welcome. Bye, say, bye, So, uh, later, please come and take your complimentary photo, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, then I'll remember you. Otherwise, every week you have to introduce yourself. <laughs> okay, so right speech. Under Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, maybe we should pass the mic, mic around. Uh. Uh, don't, don't bring it back. Yeah, just pass down and I'll just recite. Om Mani Padme Hom. Okay, then. Huh? Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. Stop! <laughs> Ah, okay. What is the first of the Noble Eightfold Path? What's your lot stress? Hey, uh, uh, why? Why? Ask, asking who? Asking who? Later, ask you to memorize the whole 37 factors of enlightenment. <laughs> okay, Lai. Pao Sang Ming Lai. I don't know the order. Uh, Jin? Yes. Hello, Jin. Hello, Sufo. Yes. Uh, what is the first of the Noble Eightfold Path? I don't know the order. Ah, okay, so uh, you have a choice. 50 50 <laughs> or, yeah, so, or, or poll the audience. <laughs> or you can call a lifeline. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> don't know, yeah, I know you don't know in order. So I give you, I give you uh, a few options, okay? I give you four options. Okay? Right, speech. Uh, the rest don't have a. <laughs> first choice is right speech. 
Second choice is right action. Third choice is right livelihood. Fourth choice is right view. Do you want to choose an answer? Right view. Do you want to uh, choose 50-50? <laughs> right view, are you sure? I'm not sure, but I will still choose my view. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Yes, final. Now don't also. Yes, right view is the correct answer. Okay, pass down the mic. Oh, money, pay me home. Okay, like. <laughs> okay. What is the second of the noble info path? Uh, the thing is uh, expression. Expression? Uh, aspiration. Ah, close enough. Yeah. So, right view is the first of the noble eightfold path. Yeah. It forms the foundation uh, from which uh, aspiration arises or intent. Yeah. Right intent or right aspiration. Very good. Give her a round of applause. Yeah. And then from right aspiration and right in uh, right view, come forth something else. Pass it on. Om Mani Padme Hom 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 Yeah, so from right view as a foundation, then give rise to right intent, right aspiration. So what is the third factor? Right speech. Very good. Well done. Oh, wow. <laughs> Never wasted. <laughs> okay, continue. Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. Okay, after, <laughs> after right speech? Action. Very good. Give a round of applause. Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. <laughs> After right speech and action. Right, let me put. Very good. Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. Om Mani Padme Hom. Okay. After right livelihood. After right livelihood. Uh, right effort. Right effort. Is that a correct answer? Yeah. Oh, money, family, home. Oh, money, family, home. <laughs> After right, right effort. Um, right, right, Very good. Welcome. Well done. Oh, money, family, home. Oh, money, family, home. You, 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 you. you. Yes, yeah, you. Last one. After right mindfulness. Uh, no. Ah, Zoping, Zoping, keep quiet. What is the last one? Concentration. Ah, uh, where do you get answer from? Ah, uh, checking for answer some more. <laughs> okay, then I must give you another one. Name the four strivings. Ah, uh, part of the si 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 zhen qing. Either si zhen qing or si ru yi zhu. Ah, this will teach you not to go and check or give answer. Okay, la, right concentration is correct. Give her a round of applause. Okay, so right speech. Right speech is part of the noble eightfold path. Yeah? But sometimes we will see in some texts where uh, right speech is positioned as the first of the noble eightfold path. 
it is not the first. Okay? Yeah. So sometimes they put it as the first. Uh, why? Because it is seen as the first under uh, sila. Yeah? However, the Noble Eightfold Path isn't taught in the way of sila, samadhi, and then panya. Yeah? It's not taught in that way. And why? Because if you consider, the Buddha's approach is very interesting. It starts off with the right view. Right view, in a way, is about your mindset. Yeah, it's about your mind, mindset. When we look at right view, it's really borrowing what the Buddha has realized for himself. For himself, the Buddha and the enlightened ones, uh, if you look at the description of right view, it's really what they have seen for themselves. Yeah? But we borrow it. Borrow it as a view. Yeah? Because why is it considered just a view for us? Because we don't really see it all. <laughs> yeah. For us, it's just a way of looking at things. Yes, we, are, we are just borrowing from the enlightened ones. In other words, we are borrowing the wisdom and knowledge of the enlightened ones to try out, to look at this world from, with a different angle, different lens. And, and then after trying out, we may say, ah, this is interesting. Uh, but try out. when we try out something, there must be some basis. Yeah? It's like when you go for a test drive, you must be looking out for something. Yeah? In this case, uh, we are not test driving a car. Yeah? Some of you, when you test drive a car, you may want to look for a silent car. In that case, if you test drive a car and you rev and the engine is very loud, do you want to buy it? No. Yeah? But some of us may want to get a car that has very strong engine sound. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Then if you buy a car that has very na nice, very good uh, acoustic yeah, soundproofing, then no matter how you wrap the engine, you cannot hear anything. Yeah? And of course, you will not buy an electric car. Yeah? So there are different considerations when you test something. In this case, when we try out the no full path, starting with right view, uh, the criteria is this. Yeah? Is the criteria, oh, when I try it, oh, a lot of people praise me. Yeah? Oh, I go to this place and I try out this right view, this so-called right view. Oh, and then, uh, I will strike 4D or not. Yeah, no, of course it's not. Huh? Yeah. So when we try out the right view, it should lead us towards calmness, lead us towards peace, lead us towards lesser and lesser suffering. Yeah, that should be the basis. Mm. That should be the basis. The right view that we adopt should lead us in that direction haven't reached there, but should be in that direction. Yeah? And after we adopt the right view, then we consider, hmm, what are the kind of intent we should have in our life? If you look at the Noble Eightfold Path in this sequence, then it will make a lot more sense. Yeah? Then if you consider right intent, where instead of being driven by greed, hatred and delusion, yeah, we will live our life with uh, non greed, non ill will, yeah, and uh, renunciation, yeah, or or non non uh, hatred, non ill will, and renunciation, yeah. So, uh, is this in line with right view? Ah, yes, yeah. And while we live our life with this kind of aspiration, then hey, we may find ourselves being more at peace with whatever happens. And with this as a basis. When we look at right speech, which is what we're going to look at today, ah, it will make more sense. Then it's no longer a set of rules codified to restrict us. It's no longer about, oh, yeah, so, so troublesome. Buddhists, oh, yeah, like that cannot do, this one cannot, that one like that. <laughs> yeah, it's no longer about that. Yeah. Why? Because it becomes clear, your direction. Yeah? You look at the direction, this is what the Buddha observed, and this is the direction. Yeah. Once you see that, hey, this direction makes sense, then when you look at right speech, ah, then it becomes very natural. So what is right speech? So there are four parts to right speech. Yeah? The first part is to abstain or to avoid uh, lying. Yeah? The first part is avoiding lying or abstaining from lying. 
The second part is harsh speech. The third, divisive speech. The fourth, idle chatter. Yeah. So there are four parts to this. So when we look at the, the teachings, some people say that, oh, you are so negative. Still is avoiding, abstaining, cannot. Yeah. But actually it's not cannot. Can you lie? Oh, someone said yes. Uh. Yeah. Actually, that's the correct answer. Uh. Depending on how you understand the word can. Let me ask you, can you fly? You cannot. Why? Because you don't have the ability to fly. So can you lie? As long as you have a mouth, you have the, the mind that is functioning, and you have the intent to lie, you can lie. Yeah. Of course, you also need someone to understand your speech. Then you can lie. If you're alone in the desert, you cannot lie. <laughs> yeah? But if you're alone in the desert, and as a result you didn't lie, there's no merit. If you're at home sleeping, and because you're sleeping, you produce no speech, and so you don't lie, is there merit? No. If a baby, while being too young, is not even able to move his head, so he cannot speak, he cannot lie, is there merit? There's no merit as well. Yeah? So no lying is not simply about one person. It's about how we produce speech towards others with the intent to lie or not. Yeah? Now, when we say we can lie, we are saying we, are, we have the ability to lie. But should we lie? Of course we shouldn't lie. And so in Buddhism, it's not so much that you cannot lie. Or if you lie, then the Buddha can't punish you. If you lie, the, it's more about saying, having learned right view and right intent, and you learn from the right view and right intent, you learn about cause and effect. You learn about karma. You learn about the consequences of our speech. That both in the present, it creates harm for ourselves and others, if not managed properly, and also in future not just next week, next month, but also in future life. So in all these ways, we realize that speech that is not, uh, not tuned, not well-tuned, tuned towards happiness, then it brings about suffering. On this basis, we avoid and abstain from lying. It's a choice, it's a conscious choice. And that's why there's merit. Yeah? Because karma is about intent. Yeah. It's an intentional choice, yeah? volition. This morning we had this, we had a, a mini ITBW for youth. Yeah. And part of it was about karma, dark and bright karma. Yeah. Dark karma mean referring to the unwholesome ones, unwholesome karma. And then bright karma, the wholesome karma. So when we talk about um, the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, and in fact, even if you look at the precepts, the four precepts, yeah, no lying, abstaining from lying, it's not that you cannot lie. Well, you can do whatever you want. Yeah? Uh, but do you want to do it? Do you really want to do it? Some people asked me, there was once at SBF, uh, it was already past 12. Then someone offered food. Yeah. Someone offered me food. So can, can you eat this? Yeah. And then someone said, uh, cannot, Sifu cannot eat already. And then the person was like, why, why cannot? We already passed 12. So he was, he was like, oh. Then the best thing is, Sifu said, can. Then they huh? <laughs> so I told them, I can eat, I can eat any time I want, but I don't want. <laughs> I choose not to. It's just like the first precept, yeah? To abstain from killing. Panati pata we ramani sikapadam samadhiyami. Yeah? Can we kill? When it's small little creatures like ants, cockroaches. Cockroaches sometimes can be tricky, uh, they run very fast. Mosquito. <laughs> pia, 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 pia. Uh, I know a lot of you, uh, you all have the batch, fast fingers or fast hand. <laughs> We can, but we are choosing, we are making a choice 
that as annoying sometimes. Is it annoying when your when your mind is still still not so trained, and especially when after a, a long day, you bathe and then you want to sleep, and just as you're about to, uh, then the mosquito. Yeah, sometimes I also wonder. Mosquitoes are not not all mosquitoes are bad, but some mosquitoes are not very ethical. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind them biting me, you know. But do they really have to fly around, like, non-stop? <laughs> like, sometimes I will tell them, like, come on, hey, buddy, if you want to bite, just bite, you know. If you want to suck blood, just go ahead, I will not kill you, but can you stop, suck a bit, then, uh, maybe not here. <laughs> right? But, the, the precept on non-killing is not simply about, oh, cannot kill. It's that even under such trying circumstances, you don't kill. Similarly, when we say to abstain from lying, are there circumstances where it's very trying? Yes, of course. Yeah? A lot of people will ask, Sifu, but under, under such, 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 such conditions, yeah? I can't help it, I'm trying to protect this, trying to protect that. I, you know, I don't hurt people's feelings. Can, can tell white lie or not? Is it still considered a lie? You really said quite lie while that. <laughs> yeah. No lying. To abstain from lying. When we thoroughly, completely see yeah, the benefits of speaking the truth. When you see that lying in the long run brings no benefit. Yeah. Ah. When you honour right speech, when you honour truly the truth, yeah, then under no circumstances, even when it's very trying, even when your own benefit is affected, yeah, you will not speak, the, speak a lie. Yeah. Uh, beyond lying, actually that there are more. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes devotees uh, have this question, wow, Sifu, oh, five precepts, so much. Hey, Sifu, can I take like maybe four? How about uh, two bargaining? <laughs> but in actual fact, yeah, and, and sometimes some of them even say, Sifu, can I not take the precepts first? Can I just take refuge first? I mean, some centers, out of kindness, you know, uh, okay, well, okay, you all take refuge first. La. Later you take the precepts. Because precepts is voluntary. So if you don't want to take precepts, who can stop it? Who can force you, right? Yeah. But what they don't realize is, when you take refuge, refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and the Sangha, taking refuge in the Buddha as your teacher, the Dharma which is what the Buddha taught, yeah, what he stood for, the very teachings yeah, that he es espouses to anyone who seeks real happiness, true happiness, then part of it contains the Noble Eightfold Path. And from there, you can also see the five precepts. And yet, you want the happiness, but you don't want the steps. <laughs> you bargain the steps. Yeah. So, it's like small kids wanting to get the, get the, 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 uh, the reward, yeah, but don't want to study. But maybe this is how we are uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so, in fact, it's not just no lying, you know. Noble Eightfold Path includes three other ones. Harsh speech, divisive speech, and idle chatter. Yeah, so, going through them briefly, harsh speech, speaking harshly, with the intent to hurt. Yeah, with the intent to hurt. Um, if we look at it in a very um, simple way, then basically, uh, we, sh we, should not, we should be speaking gently. Yeah? Is Sifu speaking gently now? Say yes. yes. <laughs> How about if I speak in this way? <laughs> yeah. Imagine if, if it's Sifu's class, right? I mean, Hello, good morning, everyone. How? What's the first noble if about? What? KS? What's the first one? Now, now. Hey, cannot. Go pumping position now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, actually, maybe better. I'll wake up. <laughs> you know, 
early on, it's very soothing, very calming. I mean, <laughs> so, opposite of harsh, harsh speech, or no harsh speech, um, are there circumstances? So there was once, one of the prince actually asked the Buddha, yeah, um, do, you, do you absolutely not speak, say anything that hurts people? Yeah. Or do you, maybe, do you, you know, is it the case? So the Buddha actually asked the prince, yeah. Wait, do you get the, the question? The prince asked the, the Buddha about speech. And basically asked the Buddha, um, like, is it true that uh, when, when you speak, or when one speaks, one should absolutely not, not harm and hurt anybody? Yeah. It means whatever you say must not hurt anyone. So the Buddha answered with a question. He, he, he told him, Prince, consider this. Your young child, your own child, yeah? uh, if your child were to you know, put something in his mouth that will kill him and he's choking, would you hesitate to remove it? So No, I will remove it. And what if while removing it, you have to draw blood? That means while removing it, it may tear a bit, yeah, but it will save your child's life. Would you do it? Of course. You say, yeah, in the same way. Yeah, in the same way, uh, when we speak or act, if, if for that little bit of, of uh, hurt, yeah, you can actually help that person. You have to do it. So sometimes, uh, especially in parenting class, yeah, uh, sometimes after learning Dharma, oh, it's yeah, after going After going for some classes, going back home, and a child, uh, early morning, yeah, a lot of parents tell me, early morning is the time where the parents oh, sweat. Yeah. Ask the child to wake up, uh, then ask them to get and bathe. Uh, <laughs> ask, after bathing, ask them to put on clothes. Uh, have, lunch, have your breakfast. Uh, I've seen for myself, okay, <laughs> my, my sister's children. <laughs> oh, jialat. All the way, you know, from when they wake up in the morning, uh, 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 then uh, to the toilet, uh, to the kitchen, then uh, to the living room, putting on the shoe. Uh. <laughs> so, so, so the trouble sometimes is when we, when we learn the teachings, it seems like Oh, either this or that, but it doesn't have to be, you know. Uh, instead, we should use and apply our wisdom in our day-to-day -day speech. Yeah, the the very prime example I always give is if you are if you see someone crossing the street, yeah, uh, and the person is in danger. Maybe the person is on the phone, doo -doo 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 -doo, or something, yeah, and then there's a car coming. What, what are you going to do? Hello. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Before, before the person turns around, bang. <laughs> right? So, we're all laughing some more. <laughs> what must you do? Yeah. How would you shout? Shupan. <laughs> So we, you say, Oi, then you, like that, <laughs> meaning the person would. Uh, okay, try, try. Let's say you, you choose someone to shout at. <laughs> <laughs> you shout, he. <laughs> Bang, gone. Try again. So you must choose the right time, you know. Yeah, you want to, oh, you're right. You must, <laughs> maybe the person could have crossed the road. Uh. Then you, oh, yeah, yeah. Then he crossed, yes? <laughs> yeah. So sometimes, it's not simply about not lying. It's not simply about uh, no harsh speech. Yeah? But it's about 
uh, using our wisdom to see is this the right time to speak also. Yeah. So in other suttas, the Buddha actually highlighted even if something is the truth, doesn't mean that you must say it. Mm. You must choose the right time to speak. Yeah, you must choose the right time to speak. You must also check your intent. Yeah, what is your intent for speaking? Is it out of compassion? Is it out of kindness? Yeah, yeah. So the third DVC speech. If a person were to speak with the intent to split people up, purely for the sake of splitting people up, because you delight in splitting people up. You don't like to see them being close together. You don't like them being uh, good on good terms. And you say things to split them up. Knowing that when you speak in this way, they will split up. Uh, then this is the third kind. Auntie, look at me now. Auntie! Ah, you see? Ah, application. Look at what I have to Look at what I have me. Stop aircon. Stop aircon. Young, 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 <laughs> <It's> steady, eh? <laughs> there are two two categories of people who can behave in this way. Small kids and elderly kids. <laughs> yeah, small kids they ha they happy happy walk in front. Happy happy, happy walking walk there. Zi <laughs> Zi so carefree. Yeah? Sometimes I wonder, why must we wait until we are so that their age, right? Yeah, why can't we do it now? <laughs> the trouble is, if you are young and you do it, uh, people say the boot or both say. Yeah. So you must also, when you speak, you must also consider whether the person will take it in the right way. Yeah. The the same message, uh, spoken by different people, will be taken differently. This is not directly under right speech, but in other suttas, the Buddha highlighted. Yeah? What is your intent and how that person will receive it? Yeah. Sometimes we may think, oh, this is the right thing, I must say it. Or I'm saying with the right intent, I want to say this for the person's good. But if the person, for some reason, at this point in time, it's not amiable, yeah? it doesn't take well to your message. Or maybe, this person is ready, but you are the wrong person to say it. We have sometimes encountered, isn't it? Especially with our parents. Yeah? And sometimes with our children. It is, it's so strange, isn't it? But right, parent and child is one of the closest bond. But unfortunately, because of the closeness of the bond, sometimes that, that makes us not the best person to speak. Yeah. So when you see that you're not the best person to speak, ah, find somebody else to speak. Yeah, find somebody else. <coughs> so the third one, early on, about divisive speech, is about your intent. Yeah? What do you intend to achieve by saying this? And then with that intent, it, you say things to divide people. Yeah. So in this way, without even looking further, you're harming cordial relationships. So if you consider your action in harming cordial relationships, how can that produce cordial relationships for ourselves? Yeah. Uh, so that, that is rooted in the understanding and acceptance of the teaching of karma. And that's why right view must come first. Without right view as a basis, you tell people, you know, cannot like that. They will just they, they cannot understand why why not, yeah why not, uh, but once you have grounded a person in right view, and the person accept it, if the person don't accept the right view as as has been seen clearly by the Buddha, yeah, 
No point telling them about right speech and all those things, you know. Uh, not much point. Yeah, because they do, half, they do it halfway, then they will start to question like, hey, sure not, you know. And that's why um, if you don't start off with right view, you will always go around in circle. So beyond divisive speech, <clears throat> then there is the last one, which is either chatter. Mm. Either chatter. So either chatter, uh, also known as qi yu. Yeah, qi yu. So speech that doesn't pertain to the path and the fruit. Now, a uh, long time ago when I, when I uh, see this, this last one, I was quite perplexed. Either chatter. Some translation translated as frivolous speech. Yeah. Frivolous speech. And I always wonder like either chatter. Hmm. Think about it. Is that chatter that is not idle? <laughs> yeah. Hey, come, 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 I got five minutes. Chit chat, come, 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 chit chat, five minutes. Huh? Usually when you chatter, it's usually quite relaxed, quite yeah. So I wonder why call it idle chatter. Huh? Uh, but there's something here, you know. It is that it is not directed. Not directed towards what? Our chatter can sometimes be directed, sometimes can be non-directional. Non-directional, that means you just sit down there, yeah, and then you la kopi. How are, how's things going? Okay la. How's work? You know la, same la, boss, you know. Hey, but do you know? Do you know about recently? You know, uh, the what? You know this and that. No, don't say out. Don't say out. Uh, don't say out. Uh, we are recording. Uh, don't say out. <laughs> Later, can I bet? Then la copy, la copy. So in this way, your chatter go north, south, east, west, all of the place. And it doesn't serve the purpose of increasing your knowledge of the Dharma, doesn't increase your wisdom, doesn't increase you in love and compassion. But instead, la lai la ke. <laughs> then in the end, you may actually give rise to even more defilements. Uh, and this, why, this is why other chatter is not supportive of the Noble Eightfold Path. It's not supportive of true happiness. And again, that is why right view is so important. It comes first. Because otherwise, what's wrong with Lakopi? <laughs> right? Lakopi is very nice. So I sit down there, chat, Lakopi, then sit, look at people. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. Look at that man with that neck girl. <laughs> then you ask most people, what's wrong? Everybody do that one. <laughs> Uh, that's why everybody not enlightened. <laughs> so once you see clearly, right view, the purpose of Noble Eightfold Path is towards enlightenment. And when you see the goal as something fruitful, something that you, are, you want to achieve, then you look back at right view, ah, it makes sense. Then from right view, look at right intent, right speech, ah, no wonder. No wonder it's defined that any speech not pertaining to the path nor the fruit is frivolous. It's frivolous. Yeah. Of course, sometimes, uh, sometimes like, let's say, for example, uh, when you come over, then you ask, Good afternoon, Sifu. Yeah. Is that frivolous? Uh, actually, if you look at the sutta, right, um, when the monks meet each other, they also greet each other, you know. Yeah. They didn't go into the specific tiapa <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but they will also ask each other, you know, like, how, is things, how are things going? Yeah. But then they will go, after that, they will go into, how is the practice? How is the community doing over here? Yeah. Are you all able to get the requisites at ease? How is the practice going? They all have someone to guide you all, and so on. Uh, so, we, we may start off asking about, in a way, worldly things. Yeah? Worldly concerns. Uh, when you meet each other, uh, 
in a way, I don't have to teach you all because you are all experts in this part, the first part, which is asking about worldly things. Uh, but hey, there's a trick also, you know. Uh, what is the trick? To be a good cons conversationist, talk about that person. Let's say you are, you are meeting someone. If you want to have a good, con like, want people to enjoy the conversation with you, talk about that person. <coughs> Don't talk about yourself. Everybody wants to talk about themselves, you know. Most people. Uh, learn to talk about that person. Yeah? But you have to be sincere about it as well. Don't do it like, talk halfway then, okay, point two, what is point two? Uh? Okay, like, ah, yes, ha. Uh, <laughs> yes, Sufu told me must talk about you. <laughs> for, sorry, uh, past 15 minutes, keep talking about myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should come naturally also. Show interest in others. So, as far as right speech is concerned, four parts. What's the first part? What's the first part of right speech? Abstaining from lying. Second, harsh speech. Third, divisive speech. Yeah, saying things that divide people with that intent. Fourth, uh, either chatter. Yeah. So beyond these four, then there are considerations as well. Yeah? Uh, to consider, the first part already talked about uh, no lying. So you must consider whether something is truthful or not truthful. Secondly, to consider whether this is the right time to speak. Yeah? Thirdly, to check your intent. What is your intent to speak? Fourthly, whether this person will take well to your, to your speech. Yeah? Uh, there's, in some places, there's one more, which is to consider, if you speak, will, will you in the end get upset? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when you give advice and the person don't take it, what will happen to you? Big take, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you have to consider uh, all these things before you speak. If it's the right thing, right is if it's truthful, and this is the right time to speak, and your intent is out of compassion, and uh, even if you speak and the person don't accept it, you are okay. And best still, if the person will accept it, wow, then you must really speak, die die speak. If not, then you have to think twice. Okay. So with speaking, there's also non-speaking. And now we come to the part, I have to stop speaking. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, two, two plus minutes left. Any, any thoughts or questions? Uh, if you all have any thoughts or questions, you all can uh, raise them now. <clears throat> If not, put your palms together. Mm. Oh yes, yes. Uh, someone sent me something, want me to show something. If you send this earlier, I, I would have taken a... So, uh, someone... <clears throat> so, Rosie... Ro Rosie, right? So, Rosie has, uh, has these two items. The first item is a 48-inch... 48 48 wow, your picture very cute. Lah. <laughs> You have so much border and everything cannot see the table. <laughs> so it's a it's a granite uh, table, stone table, yeah, uh, forty eight inches wide and six something, six to eight seater. So sometimes it's six, sometimes it's eight. <laughs> so it, does it come with the seat? 
It doesn't come with the seat. Uh. Uh, so depending on the size, you can sit between 6 to 8 percent around it. Okay? Uh, and it's free. Yeah. It's a granite table. Yeah, it's quite new. So, uh, which country was it dig, dig up from? Uh, the, is the doesn't come with all these things, huh? <laughs> and there's um, Pao here somewhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it doesn't come with all that, huh? So those who would like to have it, uh, transport is not provided, so you just have to arrange with Rosie and pick up yourself. Okay. Then the next one is a. Uh, what is this? A Samsung 7.5 liter washing machine, front loader with temperature control, rinse, spin, wash option. <laughs> High tech. Yes. Uh, so, again, it's free for you to collect if you want it. So, call now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, as I'm more like. <laughs> I pass her the mic. Uh, I'm moving out soon. Uh, I am moving out soon by 26 September this month. Because actually my nephew won this table and in the end he said he cannot have the space to put. So wait, wait, wait. Let me teach you something about right speech. <laughs> when you give something away, don't tell people that actually someone else wanted, but they now don't want. <laughs> ah, like, 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 if you want to invite, it, it is a real joke. Ah. I can't remember whether it was NTU BS or NUS BS or which Buddhist society. So one of the society one time uh, texted me and said, Shifu, are you free on this date and this date? We would like to invite you to be a speaker. Uh, because the speaker that we invited couldn't make it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Of course, for me, uh, I mean, what do I care, right? Yeah. If, if as long as I make can make it, I'll go. Uh, but just to teach you all <laughs> about right speech, uh, even though it's the truth, you don't have to tell everything. <laughs> so, don't, don't go and tell people. Oh, actually, my, who, who, no, no, no. Who, who was that, uh? My nephew. Yeah. Don't say my nephew actually wanted but decided not to lah. Then my uncle also would take a look, but then wanted, but then saw uh, but also don't really have space. Then don't have to. Just focus on what you want to give. Uh, uh, so your uncle it's, it's and your a... nephew doesn't come with it, so don't have thought. <laughs> uh. So it's a it's a granite table. Yes. The, the top can be lifted up, but the leg is also granite. Last time when we bought this uh, it takes four big men to move in. Uh, so you must really have a transport. You must come with your own four big men. <laughs> okay. uh, and, and it's very new uh, because uh, for the past five years, my, my this place was rented out. Uh, so the, for the past five years, they don't use this. These are uh, French people, they, they don't like this sort of thing. Oh. They just dump it at the petrol. Don't thing. have to say this part also. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know. Hey, now when people take her, they are like, I'm taking something that her nephew don't want, and the French people don't use, and dump it to the side. <laughs> oh, it's still, it's still new, because I don't, I don't give things away that are not in good condition. Yeah, yeah, so don't, don't, don't tell anymore, don't tell anymore. <laughs> Anything else positive, tell us something positive about this table. Uh, whoever wants, you can just contact me. Uh, it's in, my house is in Strangoon Garden, but you have to get it before Strangoon Garden September. Because I'm moving, I'm moving up. How, how Joey can put in front of her? <laughs> <laughs> Strangoon Garden, Strangoon Garden. 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 Samsung yeah, washer. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> did, did anybody would want to wash in there? <laughs> did anybody refuse to wash their clothes inside? No, I still wash the clothes. Oh, there. you still uh, wash? This, uh? this washer must stick up to like 25 like that. Before I move out. But table, anytime you want, you can just contact me. And oh, so 
Washer is only available only available on the 25th. Oh, I'm so soon soon that two days. Uh. Yeah, I, I do not wait. Give people more allowance. La. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, I'll say 24, 25, 36. A few days you just wash with your hands. Want <laughs> <la. laughs> oh, to give? Can't, can't give. Uh. Now who must give? Uh. Then the, the table, you can make any time. It's really very new. But I, I'm moving up to a smaller place. Oh. So, Nobody wants, I will have to tell people to bring it down south there. Oh, because okay. Because very sayang, right? Sayang. Sayang, right? Ah, sayang, sayang. Okay. okay. So, you okay. can protect me, okay. I'm okay. only one to one. Okay. It, it's, it's something still very new, not, not in broken condition. Okay, good. Can, okay. Uh? okay, good. So, anybody else have other things that other people don't want? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, amidst the laughter, uh, amidst the laughter, um, I'd like to extend the dedication to those who um, are suffering in the Americas, yeah, Mexico, and very possibly uh, Florida, and various parts of US. Yeah? There are three hurricanes that is now at, at the Gulf, and if even one of them, even one of them landing, you will bring a lot of damages. And it's not about the money really. Although the money, the damages in, in, in money uh, means that the people will go through a lot of hardship later. But on top of that, it is the damages that is happening immediately. If one of the hurricanes were to land, uh, lives will be lost. Yeah, that is something that is certain. So I want to extend dedication to those living in the Americas and also nearer home in, uh, in western, northwest uh, Myanmar. It's a complicated situation. There's the, the, the western press um, focusing on uh, the supposed Rohingya uh, Muslims there. Yeah. But then from uh, local Myanmar's and also from um, some of the Westerners who were actually stay, who has spent like 10 over years in Myanmar, they, they give a slightly different story. Um, whenever I give talks, uh, individuals who are non-Buddhists, they will ask me, Buddhists also ask me, hey, why are we Buddhists doing this? Um, I really don't have an answer. I don't know why they are fighting, um, I don't know for a fact, okay? I don't know personally why they are fighting. But if you read the reports, then the Western media seem to paint a picture of, oh, religious conflict. Yeah, but oftentimes conflict is not so much about religion, not, not about that alone. Yeah, oftentimes it's about resources. Almost all wars, throughout, all wars and conflict throughout history has been fought over resources. When you have something that everybody can have, why, why fight? Yeah, why fight? But when it's something that is limited, and I want it, you want it, I need it to survive, you need it to survive, and there's only enough for only one group to survive, then it's either not surviving or fighting. Of course, people will choose to fight. I'd like to extend dedication to them not just to any particular group, but to everybody in that region, in the Rakhine state, that they would find a peaceful resolution, they will find peace, they will somehow be able to sit down and you know, really look at the matter and say, hey, how can we move forward? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very troubling. Yeah. So amidst our laughter, uh, to also bring to mind all this. Yeah, I'm sure you all know as well. So it's important to have appreciation and gratitude for the, the wholesome conditions yeah, that we have in Singapore as a secular state. For us to be able to spend one, uh, one lunch and afternoon together in peace. 
We don't have to worry about, hey, have three persons standing guard outside, lock the gate. You know, we don't have to. Yeah, in many countries, you have to, you know. Yeah. So, keeping that in mind, let's put our palms together and recite. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Pu Yuan Zui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Shi Shi Chang Xing Pusha Dao. Amitabha. Chili.